Okay, we're back in the shop today with our Mark 7 GTI project car, and it is time to make it faster on track. So we're gonna do wheels, tires, and some suspension upgrades with the goal of uh, reducing tire wear, making it more fun to drive, and ultimately making it go faster. Uh, let's get to work. So why are we working on suspension today? What problems are we trying to solve? So we took the car to the track stock first, and after 58 laps uh, across a couple different days at the Florida International Rally in Motorsport Park, um, we noticed a trend, and the trend was it absolutely murders front tires. In stock form, a GTI is very camber limited up front, like a lot of stock front wheel drive McPherson strut cars. And uh, to make it even worse, you can't actually adjust the camber in stock form. You're stuck at about uh, negative 0.8 degrees, which is not nearly enough for what we're trying to do with the car. So. What do we mean when we say there isn't enough negative camber? Um, in the simplest terms, it means that the tire is leaned over like this on the outside of a corner, dragging its outside edge along the track instead of using the entire tread surface to help turn the car and put power down and turn. So by leaning the tire over more like this when the car is parked in a garage, our hope is that when the car is actually on track, the tread will be back flat on the ground due to dynamic tamber, camber change and body roll. So, what we're basically trying to do is stop the car from grinding off the outside edge of the tire and focus all that energy or more evenly across the uh, face of the tire. But there is actually another uh, tuning tool we can use to help our GTI's chassis, and that's caster. So um, I'm going to bring in a prop to talk about this, but basically caster is how far back that uh, pivot, the steering pivot, is leaned back. Um, I, I get that that doesn't make much sense. Um, let me go get my prop and we'll talk more about it. This is my bike, and what we have here is basically a McPherson strut front suspension if you ignore a couple links and make a couple logical leaps, but this will make sense in a minute. So we talked about um, static negative camber, which is basically just leaning the bike over more. And as you can see, tires leaned over more, that's static negative camber, that's good. But we have another way we can add more negative camber when we're in a corner on track, and that is caster. And caster isn't about which way the bike is leaned over, Caster actually refers to this angle. Now I'd call it the head tube angle on a bicycle. On a car we call it caster. And it's basically how far reclined the axis of uh, the steering pivot is. So why does this matter on track? Why does this matter for negative camber? So it has two positive benefits um, having more caster on a track car. Um, first of all, it has a centering effect just like a shopping cart or a bicycle. Um, this angle is why you can ride a bike with no hands. And uh, what it also does is when your bike is perfectly upright and you steer, See this? This all of a sudden is negative camber and that comes from that head tube angle or from that caster in a car. So here's a tool we can use on track. We can actually add more caster and I'll simulate that just by dropping the back of the bicycle down a little bit. Now when we turn we have more negative camber. So what we're going to do is put camber and caster plates on the GTI. One part that actually adds more negative camber and adds more caster to the car which should make much more dynamic camber when you're in the middle of a corner. Dynamic meaning what's actually on track with you. Okay, now that we've got everything apart, it's a little easier to show the differences between the camber caster plate and the stock parts here. So um, this is the stock top hat. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the top of the strut goes right through the middle of the uh, strut tower, and uh, that's how Volkswagen intended it. That's, again, about 0.8 degrees of negative camber. So to add a degree and a half of negative camber and a degree of caster, you just move that top of the strut in towards the middle of the car, and you can see that right here on the 034 Motorsports piece here. So again, basically the same design, uh, you know, rubber block, um, except there's more aluminum here, obviously. But uh, you can see that the strut is moved in and back. So again, moving it in adds negative camber, and then moving it back adds caster. So uh, pretty easy to see the differences here with them both on the bench. Um, again, pretty much the same underneath, just uh, moved over a little bit. So we're going to put this back on the strut and uh, put it in the car. So. Let's talk about why we don't have a brand new strut sitting here uh, ready to go on the car, why we're going to stick with the OEM shocks, or struts technically. Um, the reason is we were told not to. A couple different Volkswagen experts we talked to said that for a slightly lower, slightly stiffer spring, which is what we're doing here, um, there isn't really much to be gained by going away from the stock struts, especially on a car like ours that only has about 20,000 miles on it. So would we normally do that? Absolutely not. But in this case, we're going to see what the expert advice uh, act how it actually works, how it performs on track, how it is on the street, and uh, we might find ourselves replacing these shocks later, or we might decide that it's totally adequate the way it is and uh, save some money here. So let's talk money. Um, the set of sport springs we're going to install is about 20% stiffer, and it's about $260, or $265. So a pretty darn cost-effective upgrade for a car that should make it look better and uh, should, more importantly, make it handle better and be more fun to drive on track. 
Um, the camber plates and the upper strut bearings are a little more expensive. Um, these are about $50 a piece, these strut bearings. Um, you might not need to change them, but we always try to order them when we're going to have the car apart just because it would be a pain to put it back together and then have a real noisy strut the next day. Um, these camber, plate, camber caster plates are sold in a pair with fresh hardware, and uh, they're right about $373, I think. So all in, far under $1,000 for the suspension upgrades here, and uh, should make the car way, way, way more fun to drive. Um, you also might be wondering why we're not doing coilovers, and uh, again, it just kind of isn't the mission of this car. This is a daily driver. The primary goal is to keep it a fun, comfortable street car, and it's kind of rare to find that in, an, in a coilover kit, especially a coilover kit at this sub-$1,000 price point. So um, generally, you have to make a lot of concessions with NVH or tuning or uh, you know, actually something tailored for the application at that price range, and we just didn't want to get into that with this car and uh, ruin its street manners. So we're going to do just... Uh, some alignment tweaks and some stiffer springs and see how it works. Okay, uh, we finished up the front suspension. We've got camber plates and springs. Now we need to put the rear uh, sport springs in. Fortunately, that's pretty easy. It's basically two bolts, pull the arm down, put the new spring in, so we'll get to work. And while we were in there, we also upgraded the pads and rotors on the car uh, to a more track-oriented compound and uh, to a little better rotor from a 034 Motorsport. We got the suspension button back up, so we're gonna put it back down on the ground and torque everything. Uh, before we do though, I want to talk a little bit about wheels and tires because uh, we're not going to be putting the stock wheels back on the car at the end of this. Okay, we're ditching the stock uh, 18 by 7.5 inch wide wheels and going with these uh, new forged wheels from Titan 7. Now, these are an 18 by 8.5 inch wide wheel um, with a, I think a 44 offset, something like that. So this wheel and tire combo uh, is basically as much as you can fit on a street driven GTI with absolutely no worries about any kind of rubbing or issues at all. Um, it's kind of conservative, the stance guys will put way more tire on than we would, but for how we use the car, it's a daily driver that goes to the track once a month. Um, we think that this is a pretty nice fit. So we went an inch, inch wider and we also went with a forged wheel. So, what are the benefits of a forged wheel versus a flow formed wheel or a cast wheel, something like that? Um, primary, strength. They are a little more expensive, but they're also far stronger and that lets them be far lighter. So this wheel and tire combo, despite being much wider than the stock setup, is actually a pound lighter and most of that is due to these Titan 7 wheels. Um, we're also big fans of forged wheels for street cars because street cars abuse their wheels a fair bit. Um, you know, not only are we bouncing this car off curbs on track and that sort of thing, but we're hitting potholes every day. Um, you know, we're hitting driveways and curbs and that kind of thing. So it's nice having the security of a forged wheel and not constantly worrying about bending an ultra lightweight track wheel. So uh, the other cool thing about these Titan 7 wheels is they've got some fairly intricate machining details. Um, so all of the uh, spokes are kind of that I-beam style, so there's extra material removed there. And then if you look at the back of the wheel, uh, there's even more material removed from these areas too. So that makes these wheels pretty light. Um, again, we lost a pound somehow, even though we went to way wider wheels and tires. Um, we've been pretty happy with them so far. Okay, so we talked wheels, let's talk tires. And you might be surprised that there isn't a Super 200 or a, uh, what are they called, extreme performance summer tire on the car. So again, this is a daily driven car. It's driven a year round in Florida, so we don't have to deal with snow, but we do have to deal with quite a lot of rain. So we actually went with a max performance summer tire. Um, in this case, we picked the Continental Extreme Contact Sport 02. So this is not a 200 treadwear tire. This is actually a 340 treadwear tire. So is it slower than the Super 200s that are so popular these days, like a, an AO52 or an RT660, something like that? Uh, yes, it's slower, but not by much. We actually picked this tire after a lot of uh, consultation with our tire guide. Uh, we'll put a link in the description, but we've tested pretty much every sports car tire you could ever think of, and we know how they perform. And we know that this one, though it is slightly slower on track than some of the fastest 200 treadwear tires, um, it is so, so, so much better day to day. It's not noisy, it wears fairly evenly, it's great in the wet, um, actually one of the best wet weather tires we've ever tested. So we think it's a perfect compromise for this car and we think that it'll be great on the street without having to change tires when we go to the racetrack. So that's our wheel and tire setup. We're gonna throw it on the car and we're gonna go test it at the track. So that should do it for today's uh, work session in the garage. We've got fresh suspension on our GTI. We've got new wheels and tires. Um, the only thing left to do is test them all. So please make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you at the track. Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.